In this video, we are going to step aboard the Globemaster 50, a vessel that opens up new ways of thinking when it comes to the concept of a long range explorer yacht. Built with precision and care by Globemaster yachts and designed by the renowned Dutch designer Willem Nieland, this aluminium explorer yacht is not just built for traversing the vast oceans in all manner of different sea states, but is also crafted for those who envision living at sea. With its robust construction, thoughtful layout and features designed for self-sufficiency, the Globemaster 50 is a testament to what modern engineering and a passion for boating really can achieve. From its insulated hull and double glazed windows to its energy efficient design including solar panels, this Explore Yacht is equipped for both the journey and the destination. Folks, before I show you around, please don't forget to give this video a like and please also don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. The more subscribers I get, the more boats like this I can get on. In case you are wondering, then these are steps that were requested by the current owner. A very good idea and of course the fact that Globemaster were willing to facilitate this sort of detailed request from the owner just shows that you are dealing with a yard open to an owner's specific requirements. Launched in 2022, this Globemaster, affectionately known as Boar, cuts an impressive figure. Her 15.3 metre length and 4.95 metre beam give her both open ocean capability and access to those tucked away harbours. A shallow draft of only 1.2 metres expands your cruising grounds even further. But of course, size isn't everything. A displacement of 24 tonnes speaks to her solid construction. Most importantly, holding a CE Category A certification doesn't just mean Boar is built tough. She's officially rated to withstand extreme conditions, winds over 40 knots and significant wave heights exceeding 13 feet. In the large open cockpit, there is plenty of space to stow away fenders and other equipment thanks to these two large areas under the deck. The boat's tender is kept outboard on the transom and is a high field 380CL rigid hull boat with a 20 horsepower Yamaha four stroke outboard engine. The high bulwarks ensure that when things get rough, should you need to move around the upper deck, then you are kept safe. Note also the large scuppers, which will ensure that any excess water will quickly flow back into the sea. Let's head up to the bow using the starboard side deck. Again, the aluminium grab rails and sea railings ensure that when moving around up here in rough weather, you always have something solid to grab onto. These two 450 watt solar panels generate a total of 900 watts of power, significantly reducing reliance on generators while at anchor and of course, enhancing autonomy for long range cruising. On the bow, we find a rock and a 40 kilogram anchor. The boat also has a fortress 25 kilogram stern anchor with 40 meters of rope. The Rockner, recovered and deployed with an electric Maxwell windlass, is attached to 50 metres of chain and 50 metres of rope. This classic anchoring setup is trusted by mariners because the chain ensures the anchor sets correctly, while the rope handles those sudden and unexpected pulls from rough weather. Speaking of rough weather, the aluminium hull on this boat is 7 millimetres thick, as is the aluminium superstructure. While many recreational boats use thinner gauge materials, this build quality puts the Globemaster 50 on par with work boats, which are known for durability. But now we've finished having a look around the upper deck, it's time to seek the warmth and comfort of the interior spaces. As we step inside, note the dining area to port and the galley to starboard. This open plan living space has tons of natural light thanks to the large windows dotted all around the saloon. And check out that wood burner and the large window that can be opened to connect this space to the cockpit when the weather allows. The well-appointed galley has everything you need for living aboard. I really like the way that the appliances are hidden behind this cabinetry. Here we have a Lieber fridge and beneath that we find a Lieber freezer. Amidst the Kurian countertops we find a Pelgrim induction cooker as well as a Siemens oven. 
As my subscribers already know, I read every comment that is left on all of my videos. So I know that some of you will want to see me remove the panel to reveal the cooker. So this part of my video is just for you. Moving further around the L-shaped galley, under the sink we find some more storage space. And to the left of the sink is where we find a very handy Siemens dishwasher. There's also a Miele extractor installed in the galley as well. If you are lucky enough to find yourself in warmer climates, then you'll be pleased to know that the boat has a single cycle Frigomar air conditioning unit with a 27,000 BTU capacity. To put that in perspective, BTUs measure cooling power and this unit can remove enough heat to comfortably cool a 1,000 square feet space or more. But when living on board this boat in the winter, you will benefit not only from the wood stove that we saw earlier, but also from a Kabola central heating system as well. By the way, in case you didn't know, I now have a new podcast. To find that, you'll find the link in the comments. Not only does this large window open up to allow additional ventilation into the area, but it also helps to give a fantastic all-round view of the boat from the helm position. So we'll come back and have a look at the helm position in a minute. But first, let me show you down into the owner's accommodation, which on this boat is up forward. Uh, as we step into here, the first thing that I notice is really the amount of space down here. Uh, there's a fantastic volume of space for all of your storage. On the bulkhead at the top of the bed there, you've got two storage compartments. You can also plug in your charger or your phone uh, in there because one of them has a, a standard adapter and the other one has a USB port as well. Um, lots of light in here, thanks to the huge porthole over here on the port side, a smaller one over there. And again, you've got porthole over on the starboard side and a smaller one as well. Um, but what a fantastic view you'll get when you're laying in your bed and checking out the starlit skies, thanks to those two skylights. Uh, but yeah, plenty of headroom down here. I really like the colors and the finish in here is really high quality. Lots of vents as well. So if you are operating this boat in warmer climates, uh, you're gonna be kept nice and cool thanks to the air conditioning that is on board this boat. Over here, we've got a raised section next to the bed so you can step up and then lay on your bed whilst at the same time relaxing and enjoying some TV, thanks to the flat screen TV on that bulkhead over here. Uh, behind this panelling is actually one of the air conditioning ducts. Uh, the owners had this put on there, which I think is a really nice touch. And it blends in really well with the rest of the cabin. Uh, you've got the air conditioning heating control over here, uh, thanks to that digital display. Let me take you now into the ensuite. As you can see, we stepped down so again, it's a great use of space because the amount of headroom you get in here uh, is really impressive. Uh, again, another large window allowing lots of natural light in here. You've got your sink over here, obviously. Uh, more storage underneath. And of course your toilet over here. A nice decent sized shower as well. And I really like the fact that when you step in here, you can see that the shower goes all the way up another extra foot and a half. Uh, beyond this section of the headroom. But also another nice touch, that you've got your storage up there for your toiletries. And because this is higher than the shower head, uh, you're not gonna have to worry about water ingressing into this shelf, uh, which is a really good feature. But yeah, it's a fantastic place to stand and have a shower as you gaze out and enjoy that view. Got a radiator over here as well, keeping everything nice and toasty and warm but yeah i love it down here and i love the use of the different colors uh you've got storage under this bed being 200 by 160 centimeters this double ottoman bed allows you to store loads of stuff underneath it however for fear of falling into the space i will resist the urge to open it one-handed so now let me take you to the guest cabin on board now one thing that really stood out to me when I first jumped on board this boat is the way that the accommodation has been split up. Now, the owners of this boat have opted to have a double cabin and the other, what could be a cabin, is currently being used as a utility room. But let me show you how we get in there. 
Now this is the sort of thing you'd probably expect to see on a catamaran. It's almost like being on a multi-hole, but obviously we're not, we're on a mono-hole. We descend down here into the guest cabin. So we've got a double berth over here that goes all the way back. Plenty of headroom down here as well. So if you are gonna be sleeping over on the, uh, the port side there and you wanna get out of bed whilst your partner is still asleep, you can still get out uh, without causing them too much trouble. Thanks to the headroom down here. You've got your reading lights up there with some more storage over there in the corner uh, to keep your books or whatever else it is you wanna take with you. And over here we've got a plug socket uh, to plug in your laptop or your tablet or whatever it is you're gonna be bringing with you on your voyage. Got some more storage over here. There's loads of storage place on this boat. Uh, fuel shutoff valves over there. Got two portholes. As you can see, you can open these up for additional ventilation uh, and another porthole over here as well uh, with some more sockets. But yeah, it's a really comfortable, cozy area uh, with plenty of space. And up here is where we've got the ensuite. A large towel rail over here. Uh, we've got a sink that's actually a lot higher than what you'd normally expect to find, which I think is a nice touch, um, especially being a little bit taller. Standard salute. And again, we've got the shower. You step down into a recessed uh, part of this ensuite. So when you step in, you've got a decent amount of headroom. When it comes to headroom on this boat, up in the saloon, you get a very comfortable 2.3 meters. I am six foot four inches tall and had no problem at all when it came to moving around the various spaces on board whilst trying to hold a camera and narrate at the same time. I have never seen an accommodation arrangement like this on a boat before. and I'm interested to hear what you think. So make sure you leave a comment below. Before I talk about the machinery specifications on this boat, let's first go and check out the utility room. So down here is where we find the utility room. Over here we've got a washer dryer. Again, plenty of space to store your favorite tipple or paperwork, whatever it is you're gonna be bringing with you. Open these up show you inside there. There's a great use of uh, indirect lighting down here as well. But yeah, if you really wanted to, um, if you were to order your own Globemaster, then you could have this area uh, as a twin single. Over here on this bulkhead, open that, and then get access to the fuses and the electrical control panels. That just clips back nicely like that. Before I forget, I do have a brand new Linktree page that contains all of my best content as well as other services. If you'd like to check that out, then feel free to head to the video description and click on the link. One of the things that the owners showed me just before they left is this very handy remote helm, which again was something that the owners specifically requested. If you decide that you want to go and sit out in the cockpit while still motoring along, then you've got this remote, which you can take with you pretty much anywhere uh, around the exterior of the boat, uh, including over on the coach roof as well. Let me now show you some of the impressive nav and communication equipment on the helm. Note also this door that leads out onto the starboard side deck. One of the things that you will notice at this helm position is that there is no traditional ship's wheel. When the owners were showing me around this boat, they explained to me that one of them likes to sit over here on the port side, whilst the other one captains the boat. And what a great place to sit and enjoy the view. And no, this isn't a torpedo tube. If you can guess what it's for, leave your answers in the comments. At the helm, we have a Simrad multi-control display as well as a Simrad depth sounder. As you can see, you get a great all-round view. There is of course also an autopilot, a rudder angle indicator, and the radar picture when it comes to what is happening around you is courtesy of a Halo 24 radar. There is also an AIS transceiver as well as two Simrad plotters. For additional comfort then when you're sat back at the helm position, 
you can raise the throttle control levers back to you and just sit back and get on with navigating the boat. At this point, I really did have to resist the temptation to throw the lines and then set a course across the North Sea back to my home in Essex, but thankfully, my rational mind got the better of me. And in case you're worried about ever having me on your boat, of course, I am joking. Now it's time to check out the engine bay and talk about some of the impressive specifications when it comes to how this boat actually operates. Powering the Globemaster 50 are twin Volvo Penta D4 engines, each delivering a robust 300 horsepower or 220 kilowatts. These engines utilize a freshwater heat exchanger cooling system for optimal efficiency and lifespan, and they've logged a low 400 hours. The exhaust is water-cooled for quiet operation, and maneuverability gets a boost with an integrated bow thruster, and Zipwake 1000mm trim tabs ensure a smooth and stable ride in various sea conditions. Safety on board is also clearly prioritized. Each watertight compartment houses two electric bilge pumps for maximum redundancy. When it comes to performance, this boat has a top speed of an impressive 19.5 knots, but a cruising speed of 8.5 knots, burning just 6 litres of fuel per hour. She can carry 2,400 litres, or around 634 gallons, of fuel, which means that when motoring along at her cruising speed, then you can expect a range, depending on load and conditions, of around 2,000 nautical miles. Although please do bear in mind that these are just my own rough calculations based on moderate sea states. The boat can also carry 1,450 litres of fresh water and 550 litres of black water. And in case you are wondering, then you can remove this panel to get access to the starboard engine, as well as being able to remove this panel here to get access to the port engine. But what do you think of the engine room? Let me know in the comments. So thanks for joining me aboard this Globemaster 50. At the time of making this video and uploading it to my YouTube channel, she is currently listed for sale. If you want to find out more, then I'll leave the link in the video description. Of course, I'd like to say a massive thank you to the Vault Yacht Brokers for allowing me to come on board this boat, and a special thank you to the owners for letting me come on board and for taking me out on a mini sea trial. I really enjoyed it. If you've got access to a boat you'd like me to feature on my YouTube channel, and please don't hesitate to get in contact with me. You'll find all my contact details in the video description. Until next time, fair winds and following seas. If you enjoyed this video, then you'll enjoy the video that I made about the launch of Vanguard, which is hole number two of the XPM 78 range. I'll leave a link for that video in the video description. You'll also love the video that I made about the Arxon 85. I'm currently editing the footage from that, so make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the full Yacht Tour video. But fear not, if you are a member of my YouTube channel, then in the next day or two, I'll be uploading an advanced preview of the interview that I had with two of the key members of Arxon's team. If you aren't a member of my YouTube channel yet, then you can become one by clicking on the link in the video description.